Ah, thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, hey. Did I mention I made an espresso stand? Keep watching and you'll see how I made it. Right, here we go again. We're gonna start with a plain old dollar store little birdhouse. And of course, the first thing we're gonna do is take the little perch off and take the bottom off. So I asked around with my family and uh, said, what should I make next? And my mom said, I want a little espresso stand. So that's what we're going to make today. I base coated it with this bright fluorescent pink. Don't worry, all of this is going to be covered. And I cut out some windows. I went a little crazy on the back, but um, you'll see later on. So I decided to paint it a nice lavender color and we'll start with the base. Now with this one, I decided to do a little experiment and see if I could print on some uh, parchment paper because I want to make some see-through windows with some printing on it. So I just took some parchment paper and I taped it onto a regular standard size piece of paper. Taped it really good where the paper is going to feed into the printer so it doesn't jam up. And found some Im images on the computer and printed it out. know if I'll do this again I noticed it was it comes out really really faint it could be my ink I'm not sure but um, it also is very delicate um, the ink I feared would fall right off so I tried putting some glue over the top and it became kind of a happy accident um, when I put glue around the edges where the pink ink was it raised up and darkened it so all right we'll keep that I also sprayed a little bit of clear coat onto all of them because I was afraid as soon as I touched the parts where the ink was, it would just smudge right off. Next up, we're going to do the just the trim painting. I decided I'm going to do show you how to make the fake metal roofing out of cardboard, and I'm going to do a black roof, black metal roof. So I'm going to paint all the edges that will kind of show and not the parts where it'll be covered by the metal roof.
right, to make our fake metal roof, you just need a piece of cardboard that has the little wigglies in the middle, and you're just gonna peel off the first layer. It's a little tedious, but it's kind of therapeutic to do. <laughs> if you like peeling paper off of new appliances and things like this, uh, you'll love doing this. But yeah, just peel it off. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect because the paint will stick it down a little more for you. You can see it's a little jaggedy there and just pull off the bigger chunks. Once we cut it to the size and paint it black, it'll all press down and look nice. Now that we got all our pieces cut out and painted our solid color, we're just going to glue it to our roof. You can see we ended up with a little gap at the top so I found a couple sizes of dowels and tested both of them to see which one would fit the best and I went with the larger one and just cut it to size. While I was cutting the dowel, I also cut these uh, little tiny pieces because I was thinking, perfect size for coffee cups. You'll see it later. Now what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna kinda dingify the roof because it's too far too clean in my book. And I'm gonna use a very dry, almost no paint on the brush. Um, and I started with a dark gray and then I finished it with a green, kind of a, a mossy. Because you know me, in the Pacific Northwest, we have to have moss. And now we're going to just paint the dowel the same color as the roof. And then once that dries and I glue it on there, I'll also add the same dry brush technique of the, the darker gray and a little bit of green.
cut down a bunch of popsicle sticks to make our window sills and just measured them out and I'm also going to make kind of a little shelf for the side drive through window uh, windows <laughs> so you can have a place to pass your coffee through to the cars and we're, I'm just going to paint them all white. When I cut these holes, they were jagged as all heck, but that's okay. That's why we're going to do the window sills. We're going to cover it all up and nobody will be even know. So first I'm going to put the little ledge on the inside to cover that hole. And now we'll put the little um, shelf on the outside and that will cover the rest of the jagged edge on that part. And then just build it all the way around. On the front is where I'm going to put the little mom's coffee shop sign. So I'm going to put this little uh, piece of parchment down first and then I'm going to put the uh, windowsill around it to kind of lock it in. did the same exact thing to the other window and now you have a little coffee stand kiosk it's starting anyway I wanted to put this little uh, cute guy in the round window and I happened to have two images and it was just way too light for me so I just doubled it up just to make it a little bit darker and stuck it right where the little bird hole is and have to test it with a light and hey it works now we have to deal with this huge hole that I cut in the back way too big I was gonna try to fit a candle and I just went a little crazy so I think I'm gonna use some popsicle sticks and we're gonna make some doors First, I'm going to make kind of a uh, door sill all the way around just to cover those awful jagged edges. I'm not the best cutter, but hey, I try. <laughs> I make it look good at the end.
the doors, I'm going to do a bifold kind of door, is I just stain these a wood color because uh, that's how I felt the door should be. <laughs> and uh, I glued two together, so two by two. And then I used the little short pieces as the cross beams. And you'll also see how I make hinges out of duct tape. I found a couple little bitty uh, screws that were the perfect color and I think these will be perfect little door handles. Okay, here we go making hinges. Now, I didn't have any little bitty metal hinges so I made my own. I just used this uh, copper color decorative duct tape that I have and I stuck half in and half out. You're going to kind of see how this works. And then I'm going to use the cross hatches to cover my duct tape and also strengthen it a little bit because who knows how many times we're going to open and shut this door. And then once that all dries, I'm going to stick it, the part that's hanging out, I'm going to put it onto the house itself. And then it should open and shut just fine. I also reinforced it with a little bit of super glue just in case. When I screwed these in, the first one went in just fine, but the second one, of course, split the wood. So for future reference, pre-drill would be much, much easier. Here's where I'm going to attach it to the house and you're always going to want to attach them in the open position. If you do it the other way around then you won't be able to open it. You'll, it'll always be in the closed position forever. And then just fold it in and stick it down. shabby. I probably uh, cut the ends off of those screws too so they don't poke you so much. Um, now we have to deal with these side windows and I think I have just enough of this parchment paper left and I'll just glue it to the inside. Ta-da! Time to make the foundation. I'm just gonna glue the little coffee shop directly onto a little scrap piece of wood I have here. I'm also going to paint the remaining bits of green or pink that are showing just so that um, it doesn't show when I put the moss on there. And then I am going to make some of this uh, sawdust mossy greenery again. It worked the first time, I'm going to do it again. And all it is is literally some sawdust, add some paint, mix it up, and let it dry. I'm just gonna paint uh, a gray kind of where the road or driveway is gonna be because I'm going to make a faux gravel driveway from the sawdust. Mm -hmm. 
All right, we're gonna make some planters from pencil tops. Super easy to do, you just pull them right off the pencil and I cut the eraser down so that it stands flat and uh, you'll see me make some plants. For the greenery, I just save every little bit of extra parts and pieces from previous kits and things like that, and they always come in handy in future projects. It's time to greenify this thing and I'm just gonna glop the glue everywhere I want the green moss to be and uh, sprinkle it all on. let's place all the little plants as well since the glue is nice and wet. You're gonna notice if you watch a lot of my videos, I'm a messy crafter. Eh, I won't apologize for it. <laughs> That's how I work. Don't forget to put the little moss on the roof and some of the ledges.
And now I'm going to put the driveway down. I'm going to keep this pretty natural sawdust color. Just um, It's just the little turn in that you go to pick up your coffee. I think we got it. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Nice and cute. Just like how my mom would probably have it if she had her own coffee shop. Now you can't have a coffee shop without little coffee mugs. So I took all those little dowels and glued them to the end of a uh, toothpick so that it's easier to work with. And to make handles, I just bent some wire. It looks huge here because I zoomed in. But, um, and I made a bigger one too. This is gonna be kind of like a, a sign or a display. And then I made three little bitty ones. The thicker wire was a little too big for it so I used a thinner wire for them. Once I glued all the handles on and let them dry, then I painted them all a very light pink. That's going to be um, their logo, I guess. <laughs> uh, you probably have to put a few coats on, but the more paint you put on those little handles, the more it builds up and looks like it's part of the cup. See, now it looks like a coffee cup. And we need to put um, a little bit brown on the top to look like there's some coffee inside. And then we'll put a dot on the outside for the, the logo. It's all dry all you do is just break it off the little toothpick ta-da for the bigger one I glued a little bit of sawdust to the top kind of make it the pretend coffee or foam and I printed out a sign that says hot coffee and we're just gonna decoupage that right to the outside of it
also made a couple little tip jars, of course. Now we're going to add a sign over the door because we can't let just anyone in this door. And we're going to put an employees only sign. to put it all together. I put this upside down. I do fix it later. gonna glue our little advertisement to the top I just cut it down the this is just a coffee stir straw ironically and um, I cut it down and I glued it to the top now everybody knows where the coffee shop is all right and there you go you got yourself a little coffee shop espresso stand a little drive-through and um, I also added you notice a few little beads around the cute coffee cup on the top it needed a little something I feel and um, when it's all lit up you can see all the signs I kind of darkened the mom's coffee shop sign with a little bit of paint pen just so it'll come out and I think it turned out really cute I hope you like this hey if you do like this definitely give me a like and if you haven't already I would love a subscribe um, you guys have been all great and the ones that have subscribed thank you very very much i really do appreciate and we got mo lots more things to do in the future and i hope you had a wonderful weekend or whatever day you watch this on and uh, see you later in future videos bye bye <laughs>